Well, it's Q&A time, baby, and boy, do I have some questions this week. Let's get to it. William wrote in and asked, now that you have the property, how much do you have, and is there any plans on building out in the future, like lumber storage, finishing room, etc.? and are there any new tools coming? So you guys might remember that I have two bays to the shop now, and this bay is a big open space. I think this is just, it really just wants to be a place for a CNC. So while we do have a lot of wood storage in here and we've begun selling some boards in here, I do think this area right here, this wants to be CNC area. So that is a tool coming in the future. Now, as far as shop expansions go, I mean, this is all my parking lot. The turnaround over there by the dumpster is also mine. So I think if we were to ever expand this building, it might just be to come forward with it. Um, on the sides, we do have setback concerns. We've got a propane tank there. Um, on that side, you know, there's a little bit of room, uh, but ultimately the property line just isn't that much further over. So I think forward might be where we go if we do anything. And you could see in the back, while we do have some room back here, we've got a nice slope down and there's a septic field in this area as well. So I don't think this is really a great candidate for expanding, but I guess, you know, We'll see what the future holds. Uh, I do plan to do a little bit back here, but really just to have some outdoor space uh, for eating lunch and things like that. And honestly, no plans for a spray booth at this point. I've been using a lot of low VOC finishes, so I don't know, just in my woodworking, haven't really felt the need for that kind of thing. So uh, keeping it simple where possible. Oh, and I mentioned CNC before. By the way, you guys have a brand of CNC you really like? I'm uh, open to suggestion. Tom wrote in, he said, what's the deal with mortise chisels? I recently purchased a set of Narex, Narex, Nurex, <laughs> never know how to pronounce it, mortise chisels because I needed to cut some deep mortises that my router or mortising machine couldn't handle. Questions came to mind on when and how to use these things. Sharpening, do you still go through the flattening exercise on the back and micro beveling the edge? When exactly do you use them? After a certain depth is reached or from the very start? Why are they so thick? Is it for really heavy pounding and prying? That's a lot of questions. Let's try to answer them. So in case you're not familiar, this is a mortising chisel. You can see it absolutely does have a much thicker body here. It's a much more robust and substantial type of chisel compared to a standard bench chisel, which is a lot thinner and may not necessarily have perfectly even parallel sides on it. The reason we do all this is because we do indeed give it a pounding. You're going to pop this into a mortise and you're gonna chop down. And then at the end of the operation, you may even pry up a little bit to clean it out. Now it's important that you have this kind of stability. So of course we don't wanna break the chisel. Uh, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on it, but you're also establishing the dimensions of your mortise when you use this tool. So it's important that it be accurate and it be nice and parallel all the way down each side. Uh, when I sharpen these, I do sharpen them at about a main bevel of 30 degrees and then I'll do a micro bevel of 35 degrees and the reason for that is because the more material you have behind this edge the more robust that edge is so if you are putting this thing through torture you want as much meat there as possible to have a nice robust edge uh, we're not necessarily using this for pairing operations or things where you want a shallower bevel here and you'll be able to slice across this is definitely more intended for chopping now, if you want to learn a little bit more about hand tools and especially how to incorporate them into a power tool shop, you might want to check out my book, Hybrid Woodworking. It's available at TWWstore.com. And also, you really want to go off the deep end with hand tools, go check out my buddy Shannon Rogers at the Renaissance Woodworker. So Scott wrote in, he says, question, I'm going to build the gaming dining table out of ash. This is a guild project from uh, quite a few years ago. Cheaper, and I already have a bunch of it. Would it be the same finish as your course or something different? Thank you for your time. All right, so on that particular table, I believe I used a wiping varnish, probably armor seal or something comparable. Uh, that's held up pretty well. That's a really good finish just in general. I just wanna you know, sort of make sure everybody understands that when it comes to a clear coat, with very few exceptions, the species doesn't really matter. Uh, the finish is the finish and the wood is the wood. So sometimes when we're using maybe oily exotics or something like that, we do have to be careful about which finishes we put on those. But for most of the domestic species we work with, it really comes down to which finish are you good at applying, what's gonna give you the most success, and what's gonna give you the kind of protection and the look that you want. It doesn't really matter. So absolutely, anything I used on that piece of furniture, if you're using something like ash and other domestic species, no problem using that at all. The question isn't so much, is that the right finish for the wood? It's, is that the right finish for you? Now I actually got a very similar question from Gary. Kind of a similar answer too. He says, I started woodworking over a year ago when I retired. I'm having trouble finding a finish for my walnut projects. Any suggestions? 
Well, I think I'd like more information on why you're having trouble finding a finish because the reality is just about any finish will do. Again, with the finishes, it comes down to personal preference and what you're looking for out of the finish, the way it looks and the way it performs. With walnut specifically, it is a darker wood. So I would say there are some waterborne finishes that might look a little bit murky on the surface. They may have maybe even a little bluish cast to it. I don't particularly love that, but there are certainly waterborne finishes that would look just fine. But whether you go with shellac, lacquer, uh, some kind of an oil-based polyurethane, a varnish, a wiping varnish, Danish oil, or even any of these natural tongue oils and linseed oil mixtures, they're all gonna look great on walnut. In fact, you gotta work hard to make walnut look bad. So I think the thing is, you wanna narrow down your focus a little bit, focus on finishes since you're fairly new that are easy to apply. I would check out the world of hard wax oils and you're probably gonna get the most immediate success. And at this stage in your woodworking, that's what you want. You just need the quick wins and stuff that's gonna make everybody happy with the things you make. Made. Stu at Yellow Mug Inc. says, I've been thinking since you've done several videos on exterior furniture, any new thoughts on teak specifically? Let it go gray and be beautiful or oil or other. Thanks. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of just letting things go gray. But when it comes to furniture, I actually don't really like that weathered gray look. I mean, it's a personal choice. Lots of people like it and there's nothing wrong with it, especially with something like teak because it will actually hold up. It might look like crap, but it still should be okay for quite a few years. But I personally don't like that. Now, I think if I just had so much furniture that I just can't keep up with the maintenance on it, then it's gonna do what it's gonna do. But as long as I have control and the desire to do things like add a coat of oil periodically or just do some finished maintenance, I like the wood to look like good quality wood. That's just a personal opinion. Um, so you guys, I'd be curious to hear from you, just sort of an informal poll in the comments. Do you like to let the outdoor furniture stuff go gray? I'll keep it all natural or do you want to constantly keep up with it to keep it looking a little bit more like, uh, you know, nice colorful wood tones. And if you're interested in a little bit more of a deep dive into some of these outdoor finishes and how they've held up with my own experiences, I'm gonna to link to a video for you that I think you're gonna like. And finally, Calvin wrote in, he says, this is one of those questions that you hate. How'd you know? I have been thinking about getting a domino. Which one? I am by no means a professional woodworker, although my wife thinks so. I have a hard time justifying the cost. Is it worth it? Well, let's get something straight. You do not need to buy a domino. If you don't think it's worth it, why are you even asking me? <laughs> like, there are so many other ways that you could put pieces of wood together that do not involve the domino. If you really don't think it's worth it, don't come to me to convince you to buy it. I'm just not gonna do that. I think you have other options. But if you are in the market and you do think it's worth it, then I can tell you which one I think you should get. All right, so here we have the Domino 500 and it's big brother, the Domino XL or the 700. And you can see the real big difference here is the size of the cutters. So if you're doing larger scale work, the XL is gonna be your best friend. If you don't really do anything too large, like big bed frames or things like that, you probably might wanna go with the Domino 500 because it is a lot lighter. This thing comes in at about seven pounds, whereas the XL is a little under 12 pounds, 11 pounds, nine ounces, according to my scale. So if you have to pick which one you wanna be carrying around all the time, the Domino 500 is going to be much more fun to use, I think. That said, if you want the most versatility possible and you want all your bases covered, then you would want to get the XL because not only can you do these large bits and it won't directly take the smaller bits from the 500, but if you get an adapter, you could take those smaller bits. Now there might be other limitations. I haven't really used this much myself, so just do your research there. But I think if you're going for versatility and all your bases covered, XL. But I will tell you, when I use these, you guys have seen the kind of furniture I make, 99% of the time, I'm reaching for the Domino 500. Uh, very few projects that I do require the scale of the XL, and sometimes when they do, I'm not even using the Domino, I'm making traditional mortise and tenon joinery using my router. All right, so that's gonna do it for us today. Hey, thanks everybody for sending in those questions, and if you wanna get your question on the show, all you need to do is sign up as a member here on YouTube or join the Patreon as well. Uh, we'll put those links in the description for you. All right, so thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.